carrying a pneumonia are also known as PCP. It is a serious infection caused by the fungus pneumocystis jovisi. So most people who got PCP have a medical condition that weakens their immune systems, like those patients with HIV and AIDS, or those patients who take their medications such as corticosteroids, which lowers the body's ability to fight germs and sickness. However, PCP is still a substantial public health problem. Much of the information we have about PCP and its treatment come from with caring for patients with HIV and AIDS. For the etiology of the Masistis pneumonia, which is the ubiquitous which found in the environment, and the epidemiology about HIV, patient's organ, transplant patients with hematologic malignancy, and those patients with immunosuppressive. PCP is common when CD4 count is greater than 200 cells per ml. It is present with bilateral interstitial pneumonia, which it has more symptoms than signs. Therefore, in lung biopsy, it will show a thickened alveolar septa with floppy isosinophilic exudate in the alveoli. In PCP, both the thickened septa with floppy exudate contribute to dysfunctional diffusion capacity that is characteristic of this pneumonia. This damage, type 1 pneumocytes and hypertrophy or proliferation of type 2 pneumocytes. To understand more on the lung pathology that has been shown, organisms that had been inhaled to the alveolar space results to pneumocystis, which proliferates into the lungs that provokes mononuclear cells response where the alveoli is filled with proteinaceous materials that can lead to alveolar damage. Therefore, the alveolar capillary injury increases that can cause surfactant abnormalities which affects of interstitial edema and may develop fibrosis. <laughs> For the signs and symptoms of PCP, there are symptoms such as fever with signs of hypoxia, especially with exertion. So another symptom that you will observe is dyspnea, which means doorstop and shortness of breath, with signs of tachypnea and tachycardia. So another symptom is dry cough with signs of inspiratory crackles. Another symptom is pyretic chest pain, which has a sign of elevated A or a gradient. So the last symptoms that you will observe in PCP is malice. So in the chest exam, the signs are normal, which is in 50%. For the chest X-ray findings, so in fever, there are diffuse bilateral and hazy infiltrates, which we call butterfly. For the dipsnia, there are pneumothorax has shown. In dry cough, there is a pleural effusion, low bar infiltrate, and new dole, which is less common. For the last one is pleuritic chest pain, which in chest x-ray findings, there are normal in 3. So the gold standards for the diagnosis, it relies on the identifications of disease or the trophies or the stains inside the respiratory secretions, rarely in the tissue. So when you suspect PCP, it's induced by the sputum sensitivity, which ranges from induced buta all the way from less than 50% in 90%. So it depends on the study or it depends where they perform it or it depends on the person obtaining the dispute on the effort of the patient or the laboratory who will read the indisputable. Generally, if an induced buta MS or PCP repeats, it is not helpful because of some mixed data. So if there is a negative dispute, bronchoscopy with BAL is the next step. Bronchoscopy
therapy with BAL increases the sensitivity to 90 to 99 percent. And then, a rarely transbronchial or open by the lung biopsy is required. So, lung biopsy improves the sensitivity even more in terms of non-invasive tests. So, prevention initiating prophylaxis. So, initiating prophylaxis is the key for the patients with immunosuppressions. So, it recommends from the CDC. So, the starting guidelines are those patients who have CD4 count below 200, which the other considerations are those patients who doesn't meet those first two qualifications, but has a CD4 with a percentage of less than 14 is being considered as a B2 recommendation. And for the prophylaxis, it should be considered. So other preventions are AIDS defining illness or someone who doesn't meet the other qualification can also be considered. Therefore, following the PCP treatment, or also known as the secondary prophylaxis, as they're opposed of the other qualifications, which is the primary prophylaxis. So, discontinuing of prophylaxis or the stoppage of pneumocystis prophylaxis with CD4 count below 200 is suppressed by the viral load of the overall rate of PCP, which in the trials, 100 of person years is quite low. How can we prevent exposure and when the cystus is an ubiquitous organism? But the question is, should the infected hospitalized patient with PCP be isolated? PCP could be in the same room as others who are immunocompromised. So the implication of that is yes. a appropriate treatment under a mild disease is considered as a general patient who can be treated as an outpatient or those patients who doesn't have significant hypoxia or they are able to take oral meds so for the severe diseases patients those patients are the ones who need to be treated in the hospitals with a significant hypoxia or anyone who meets the qualifications for a cost corticosteroids so of course someone who has comorbidities are in need for intravenous pentamidine which it has a side effects with need of close monitoring and those patients who are hospitalized from a mild disease which the primary treatment is oral bacterium it is an alternative medication for patients who cannot tolerate an oral bacterium which it, in it includes clindamycin with primaquine, trimetrophine, and dapsom or etob etobico. So for the mild reaction to bacterium or a non-life threatening reaction is considered as the sensitization, which is equated of the back room. It is the best for patients with severe diseases. So IV pentamidine is an another option to those two drugs. Another option is clindamycin primaquine because the clindamycin can be intravenously and the primaquine is cannot.